This one AI hack has been a total game changer for me and my business, and I know it's gonna do the same for you. So can you imagine having your own AI assistant that's trained to do exactly what you need it to do, exactly how you want it done, that you can get the specific answers or outputs from in just minutes? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in today's video. We'll be walking through how to create your custom GPT in ChatGPT in just a few minutes. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ali Bloyd, and today I'm walking you through a tutorial on how to create a custom GPT. I'll show you how to set it up, customize it, and start using it right now. And trust me, this is way easier than you think. Work with me through this tutorial, and by the end of the video, you're gonna have your own custom GPT ready to start automating tasks for you in minutes. A custom GPT is basically your own version of ChatGPT. You give it instructions, define its tone, tell it what is most important to you, and make sure that you're getting the consistency and the answers that you want every single time. Think of it as your dream assistant that you can build super fast without ever writing a line of code. Now let's go ahead and hop into ChatGPT and see how it works. Now the first thing that you're gonna need is the ChatGPT Plus subscription. So this is $20 a month and I promise you it's gonna be the best $20 you ever spend. Now once you have your ChatGPT Plus account, you're gonna log into ChatGPT and we are gonna navigate over to the left-hand sidebar where it says Explore GPTs. We're gonna go ahead and click on that and then you're going to see a screen that looks just like this. The top right, we'll click create and now this is where the magic happens. The first thing that we're gonna do is give our GPT a name. So we can call this Allie Bloyd's hiring assistant. Whatever this is going to be for you, that's the name that you wanna give it. Now we've got a description, so just a little bit about what it does. Now on the right hand side, you can see the preview. Our name is going to be forward facing. Now these GPTs are things that you can use internally for just you, just your team, or you can share these with other people as well. So if you plan on sharing these with others, you do wanna make sure that that name is descriptive and we give it a description that tells somebody what this is actually gonna help them do. We're gonna say, you are an expert recruiter, team builder, and interviewer for Ali Floyd Media. Or you can say, I am an expert recruiter, okay? So speaking in first person is fine. It really doesn't matter either way. Now, we can see what that looks like right here. The instructions is really where you have to focus. Now, these instructions can be as simple or as detailed as you want, but this is essentially your master prompt for this bot. So the more detail, the more instruction we give it, the better it's going to do for you in producing exactly what you're looking for. Now, ultimately, before going into this, it's a great idea to know how you actually intend to use this bot because that is going to change the way that you approach the instructions, the knowledge base, the conversation starters, all of that good stuff. But for example, it says, what does this GPT do? How does it behave? What should it avoid doing? So I could say something like, I am the recruitment specialist for Ali Bloyd Media. It is my job to review applications, review video submissions, review interview call transcripts and identify the best fit for the Ali Bloyd media team based on our core values, company culture, and the specific roles that we are hiring for. <clears throat> our company focuses on hiring batteries included a players. This will always be the focal point when analyzing applicants. I will always refer to my knowledge base to understand the role I am being asked about, the core values, identity statement, 
and mission of the company, as well as the personality profiles of the existing team members. I will review personality test results and identify if this person would be a good cultural fit for the company and an ideal fit for the specific role depending on the ideal personality traits for this role itself, okay? Now, I'm giving it instructions on what I want it to do, what I want it to look at, and the information that I want it to reference when it's being used. Now, all of these pieces of information, such as the company culture, the mission, values, vision, things like that, we could go ahead and type those into the instructions. That is one way to do it. Another way to do it is going to be to upload knowledge files into the knowledge section. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, ultimately, ChatGPT is already super, super intelligent. So I don't need to give it very minute details on what a personality test is and what type of personality is best fit for certain roles. It's already going to be able to identify a lot of that, but it doesn't know what roles we're hiring for. It doesn't know the personality types of our team members. It doesn't yet know the mission and the vision and all of the things that we're looking for in our company culture. And so that is something that I'm going to need to give it. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to give me that information that I'm looking for. Now, outside of that, I could say, here is how I want you to speak. Here's the tone of voice I want you to use, things like that. Now, in this specific example, this is just for internal team use. This is not something that is going to be communicating with other people. This is not something that is going to be writing documents for us. This is something that's going to analyze data and give us feedback on who we should hire for these different roles based on everything that's been submitted. If this is something that will produce video scripts, produce written content for social media, or any other form of written content, it's really important that you define the tone, the type of language that you want it to use, and give it samples of that type of language. So I'm going to show you some other custom GPTs that I have set up, and we'll go through some of the instructions, some of the documentation, all of that good stuff. But for this specific purpose, I might be okay with this initial set of instructions. Now, again, the more detailed the instructions, the better the output. Sometimes you don't know the additional instructions you need until you've gone in and tested it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now we've got conversation starters. So conversation starters are exactly what it says. It's an easy way for somebody to start the conversation. A lot of times somebody will have a bot they're looking at and they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. So conversation starters are a great way to just go ahead and jumpstart the process. So this could be, I need you to analyze or I need to analyze resumes. This could be, I need to analyze interview calls. I need to get a job description. I need to understand the role I'm hiring for. Okay, so these are different conversation starters. You can click on this button and it's going to go ahead and start that process. Now, we can get super specific and say, if someone needs to analyze resumes, here's the exact details that we need them to provide or upload in order to do the best possible job. So we'll look at some of those examples in other GPTs that I've set up. Now we've got our knowledge base section here. Now, as of now, we've got about 10 documents that can be uploaded. There's not really a limit in terms of the length of those documents, but keep that in mind. It's better to use PDFs or docs as opposed to other file formats, but other file formats can be uploaded. Just hit or miss in terms of if it retains that knowledge in the way that you want it to. So uploading these files is very simple. We're going to click upload and we could grab several of these documents and we could upload those. They're going to show up in the knowledge section. I also typically like to reference the files in the knowledge section. So I might say, you will always pull this information from the files uploaded in your knowledge section. So it's always good to reiterate really important points because no matter how good your instructions are, it still may not do exactly what you want from the very beginning. So going back and then 
adding in that same information in a couple of different places, saying it in a few different ways can be really helpful. Now we also have the capabilities down here. So web search, do we want web search to be turned on? In some cases we have it turned on, in other cases we don't. So that is just based on what knowledge you want this to be pulling from. Do you want it to pull from information online or only from the instructions and the knowledge base documents? Do you want it to use Canvas? So Canvas is something that is essentially creating sub documents within your chats. Uh, this is something that is really helpful. We're going to enable Canvas. Is this something that might be generating images? Sure. In this specific example, I don't really need it to generate images, so I can turn that off, but there's really no harm in leaving it on. Do we want this to have code interpreter and data analysis? So we might want to have that data analysis for the type of bot that we're creating. We also can create actions. Now we're not going to go into all the specifics of actions today. There's a lot of cool things that you can automate with custom GPTs, but this is the simple process of creating a custom GPT. The amount of time that it takes you to create this is strictly based on how much information you give it, how much time it might take you to pull together the knowledge base documents, and how easily you put together this prompt. Now, pro tip, you can actually ask ChatGPT, how would I create the best possible prompt for this specific bot? What information should I upload to give it the best possible chance of success? So even before you've created a custom GPT, just ask ChatGPT, what do you need from me in order to create this? How can we create the best possible prompt? feed it the information it's asking for, and then allow it to create the prompt for you. So that's a great way to jumpstart this process. However, again, testing it is the most important thing. So I now have the ability to preview this over here. I'm going to click on, I need to analyze resumes, and we're gonna start to test it out. See what the responses look like. Are these the responses you would wanna have? Or do you say, hey, actually, before it tells me to upload those resumes, I want it to always ask X, Y, and Z, but it's pretty straightforward. Upload, tell me what you're looking to hire for, and then it's going to assess it based on these things that are the best fit. Then once we have sufficiently tested this, which some bots need a lot more testing than others, it really depends on, again, how you plan on using this, how significant the information would be. Um, so if it was incorrect, would that be a really big deal or not? But going back and tweaking and refining these over time is critical for the best results. Now, once I'm done, I can hit create and I can say, this is only for me, nobody else, or anybody with the link can view this or do we want to add this to the GPT store? So those are the options for now. We're just gonna click on only me. The last thing that we didn't cover is the icon or the image. So this is my link, but I can also access this in my chat GPT account, which we'll take a look at. If I want to upload an image, I can go ahead and just click upload. I'm gonna type in logo, grab my logo, and then now it's going to save this logo for my bot. I'll click update and that's really it. So again, for this bot in particular, I would certainly go back and update <clears throat> all the files in the knowledge section. We would make sure that it's got company culture, that it's got our mission, our vision, our values, the type of roles we hire for, the personality test from the team members that are already in the business so that we can make sure we're getting the best possible information. Now, after this is created, you're going to see that show up on your left-hand sidebar. So I have a lot of custom GPTs that are set up, and these are most of the GPTs over here, but we see this at the very bottom, Ali Bloyd's hiring assistant. So if I wanna use this GPT, I simply click on it, and I can go ahead and begin. It's really that easy. Now, let's take a look at a few of our other custom GPTs and some of the instructions that we've given them. So this is a travel booking assistant. If I go to edit GPT, we're gonna be able to see the specific instructions that I've given to it. So we've got different details. This is a very long prompt with everything that I really want this to know right in the instructions. Okay, I don't have any files updated in this GPT because everything I need it to know is inside of those instructions. Now, if we go back and take a look at a few others, 
let's look at our social content GPT. So this is something that is available to my students. If we go to edit GPT, we're going to see that we've got a pretty detailed prompt here, but we have several different documents that are uploaded to give it the information that it needs. Let's take a look at our master coaching bot. So this is trained on a lot of different things. So if we go and take a look, you're going to see that we've used all of the files that can be uploaded. We have documents that are filled with months and months and months of transcripts from our coaching calls, our critical ad strategies and supporting documentation for the way that we do things, what we recommend. This is a very, very detailed bot. So we actually have more than 10 documents in this case. So they may have updated that specific requirement recently, which is great because if you do need a lot of documentation, it's way easier to upload more than it is to just add more to your existing documents. We do not have web search turned on for this one because we only want it to pull from the information that we're giving to it. So this is our prompt not super, super long, but definitely detailed. But more than anything, it's all about having these documents inside. So there are so many different use cases. I have these for different team members. We have a sales bot for our sales team. We've got an EA bot for my executive assistant. We have a customer success manager bot. We have multiple bots for our students in lots of different categories to help make everything easier. This is the way to really maximize your time, maximize the time of your team and get the outputs that you're looking for. And there you have it, your own custom GPT that you can use for any purpose under the sun to boost productivity, get more efficient and effective output, or just to impress your friends if you think it's really cool. Now, if this video is helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel so you never miss anything new on AI, paid advertising, automation, or growing your business online. And stay tuned because I will have more detailed videos going through how to automate the actions with these custom GPTs, how to connect multiple custom GPTs together, and really automate your entire workflow in so many different categories. And if you're ready to take your business to the next level with AI automation, paid ads, and really anything related to growing your business online, check out the link in the description. We would love to talk with you. We would love to work with you and see how we can get your business fully automated and highly profitable using strategies just like this one. See you in the next video.